The best way to learn any software is to learn through project-based learning and problem-based learning. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this chapter. I'll teach you how to create a locker door in Substance Designer using its default meshes. And we will learn all from scratch. All the lessons in this chapter will be step by step in complete detail. So without further ado, let's start with chapter 4 and create this locker door. Oops. It fell down. It was just a door. Where's the locker's door? So let's start with first lesson of chapter 4 and before beginning what we will do is that we'll see what we are going to make. So we are going to create this sort of a locker which is a square form but if you will notice over here the, all the sides are same basically I, uh, like there is no top bottom and other sides shown but uh, all the sides are same as you can see in this uh, image. So in a uh, substance designer when we choose a default material like a plane or like a box it's usually it's like it's signed uh, a kind of uh, one face of like, like material so you can only uh, model one face so if you are converting your material to a cube so you will notice that it will show in all the other sides because it's a plane showing on all the other sides so this is basically if you want to see how it looks like when it is placed on a different light phase or in the light environment because usually on a plane it's laying down on the ground so the lights are a little hard to see uh, how it will affect so basically to check how the lights will look like and how the light will hit on the object we usually turn them into a um, the rounded cube or a sphere or a rounded like cylinder so like so many things we can convert that into so that's what it is it's a rounded cube and what you need to focus on is, uh, is on is this uh, plane okay so we are going to create a locker where we have the hinges we have all these rusting going on we have the lock uh, like side over here where your lock will be sitting so, like some of the buttons to open the lock door so these kind of things we will create. So without further ado, let's jump into Substance Designer. And the first thing we will do here is that we will set up our file. So let me move this back to the other place. And now here uh, we are going to create a new substance. Now we can create empty and then we can create our own base material that you can do. But I will just save the time and I will just choose PBR metallic roughness so that we can have these pre-made outputs. So I'll press OK over here and we will get everything set up by itself. So we don't have to do a lot of work here in setting up uh, our materials. However, I like to uh, do my own setup. Okay. Uh, so that's what I will do because it makes my work more easier. I feel more comfortable in working in, in that like sort of uh, environment. The first thing what I need to do is that I have, uh, I, I usually take the height output from here and move it on the top somewhere here. And under the height, I keep my uh, normal map. So let's move this uniform color back there. So this is base color basically, not uniform color, base color. And then I'll bring up my ambient occlusion and move it right under the normal map. And others, I'll keep the roughness down below, metallic down here. Then I'll take the base color and put it here. And to make sure everything is lined up, I will select all these from here and make sure they all are in vertical line vertical line okay and i just want to distribute them evenly so there is equal gap we, you can move it around later on but this well, i just want to keep them equal uh, in distances so here we got all the setup we are ready to go first thing first so i will uh, save the file here okay and then 
I'll just choose a folder here. So this is where I will save it and I will call it lesson one or maybe chapter one, chapter four, locker. Got our chapter four locker. And this is our new graph. So here I'll rename this to uh locker graph or something specific okay so here i got it now before beginning one thing i want to discuss here is the grayscale value now at this moment if i will go here uh to my height map this is my height map and if i will add something here for example if i go and directly if i will add a shape here so i will add a shape a disk shape scale it down a little bit okay and then i'll just delete this uniform color from here and add this here okay so you will notice no changes uh like happen here like like there there are no changes you cannot see any sort of changes here so what you need to do here to see changes you basically have to go to your materials default physical material roughness this is what we are using and then tessellation so once i will go in the tessellation it will show me all these features so i have to turn on my uh, like tessellation this is the, something like this uh, like a like a subdivision level so you need a higher subdivision to get much more better result and it depends basically on uh, how your output should be like are you working on a very high the polygons or normal or uh, like lower so it's totally up to you so i will just change it to 16 right now and there is no height value that's why it's not showing me the uh like a circle going uh like in a height direction or something like that if i will scale it up so you can see that now i can see something happening but because there is no ambient occlusion i cannot see that okay so what i will do here is that i will remove this uniform color from the ambient occlusion and space bar and i will add my own ambient occlusion over here and output from here to here then i will take my shape and then input it over here once i will do that i will be able to see this here okay now keep in mind uh some of these uh like like colors like suppose you can see this uniform color is 8 bit this 8 bit 8 bit so you have to make sure for a better result it should be uh at least 16 bit so i will go to this normal and i will convert this into a 16 bit so i will go to the output format i will change this uh from relative input uh like related input to absolute and once i will do that it will allow, allow me to change it from 8 bit to 16 bit now my result will be much better i can take it and drop it here okay now i have a good uh, height map here however suppose if i want to subtract it okay so how i can do that is i can get the blend here oops space bar blend okay and then let's make this a smaller scale okay here i go and then i will take this one put it here okay then i will this here okay so i can see the scale value like my scale here okay now if i go here you can see that it's, I, I have uh like copy i have add if i will subtract it nothing is going to happen right now because there is no background here there is no background value so what you need to do is that first thing first is you should need a background color over here a background value over here and that should be a grayscale value so simple thing space bar uniform color okay and if i will go and add it here somewhere like in the background okay 
and first of all if you will notice that there is a dotted line coming over here showing that there is a dotted line there is a dot like there's a yellow line here yellow means colored so i have to convert this into a grayscale value this uniform color because i need just a gray grayscale value i don't need any color value so because this is uh, like colored as you can see here like it shows it's colored and it shows it's yellow yellow means colored so it is affecting my shape also okay because this is a uh, completely grayscale and this dotted line is an error is an error so this error should go so i will go to the uh, uniform color and i will just change it from color to grayscale and as soon i will do that i will not have that issue now as you know i went here and i used a value here subtract so but it's not subtracting the reason is that because this uniform color is black and nothing can be subtracted from black so there should be ideally a grayscale value so if i will go and convert this to a white okay so you can see i have this uh completely uh you know subtracted form over here but this is not ideal because this is white it should be grayscale because grayscale is between black and white now why grayscale is more important why we need grayscale the reason we need grayscale is that what if we have a double sided plane that we are going to uh, project some detail over here some height maps over here and same we need here so to balance that because that you will be doing a lot inside substance painter you will have a lot of planes or objects or materials that will be double sided we will do that in our future classes also so to avoid this issue okay because if it is black there is no subtraction there is only addition if it is white then maybe there is no addition okay there is only subtraction so for example if i just double click it here and then instead of uh, subtract if i will choose add i cannot see anything adding up okay because it is purely white but i can only subtract so that's one uh, issue over here with the white uh, like uniform color so if i will change this to grayscale value 0.5 now you can see it is subtracting plus it will be also adding so if i will go here back click add so it will be adding as well okay so that's one good thing about it and now suppose if you need more height to it something just like that so you can just go to uh, material default of uh, like physical metallic roughness like tessellation or just click edit button here like edit option and if you need more height you can do that like maybe you can add it 15 okay or maybe more and with the uh levels you can like decrease or like decrease or increase uh the height uh like the properties over here okay so i'll keep it 20 for now but 20 i think it's a lot but i, I can change it so just for uh, like some cases i would put it there now one more thing is that if i will go here okay and let me do it here and let's remove this for a while let's let's go here and it's uh keep it add just remove this for a while okay and you you have seen that it's it went down it went down because of what the uh, like uh because i removed this so there is no a grayscale value in between like like there is no mid-level value here now so no mid-level value that's why it moved it uh, like moved down like the plane itself because it's all black you can see here now if i will go here add a like a blur something high level uh blur execute scale okay and then if i inc uh, increase its uh, quality here a uh, little bit intensity you can see that i have increased but now notice how the result is okay just notice the result uh it's kind of like really really bad quality the reason is that because when i added this uh blend it was 8 bit. So 8 bit will give you this issue. Okay, so what you need to do here is that you can go to the output format, go here, uh, instead of related of input, choose absolute and change this to 16 bits. Soon you will do that, that issue will be gone. Okay, now everything is fine over here. But this is one thing you have to be careful about. Okay, 
go and increase or decrease. Now it's fine. Okay. Uh, I'll add this one now back to it. And now, as you know, I have added the background, like uh, the mid level value back, which is the grayscale. I have to increase it or decrease it more in order to get a fine result. And one more thing we can do is that convert this to 16 bit as well. I don't think it will uh, cause any issue, but just in case. Okay, and that's what we will have here. So you can see that the, the ground level value is now smoother than the top, uh, like top level value. The top level value, if you want to uh, make the top level value smoother as well, so you have to put the blur after this blending okay so what I need to do here is that I have to remove this with the backspace okay and then blur HQ here then press shift move all of it here and move this here and you can see that it's blurring just like that so depending on how much you want you need so this is how it will uh, work basically so uh, this is the basically uh, are some tips that you have to keep in mind. So in the next lesson, we will go through uh, the starting. We will start with our model. We will create first the door gap and then we will move forward. So I hope you have understood about uh, like the basics here, how you have to uh, how, like what are the things, what are the key features you have to keep in mind, what is the concept of the height map, the mid level, uh, uh, like a gray value subtract and add and 16 bit at 8 bit so uh, next class i uh, hope uh, hopefully you will uh, like you will understand more about these things so uh, thanks for joining in and we'll see you in the next lesson there's one important announcement i would like to make i have started three great membership plans on my channel i have introduced zdi friends membership plan which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. I have also introduced ZDI Early Bird Plan, which will give access to Z Interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch. Last but not the least, I have introduced ZDI Premium Plan, which will give access to advanced professional tutorials, which you will find it very, very expensive outside. And I will be giving this and a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic smashed up retro television.